What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I'm um, going to be a fast video today because I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, I know it's been about two weeks since I've had one out, but uh, I'm getting there. Anyway, uh, today we're going to go and we're going to actually do a Hyperland install on Void. Now, if you're asking why, you've already got a video out on Hyperland on Void, yada, yada, yada. Yes, I know, but I have had a couple requests since the process has changed a little bit or has been updated. Um, I've been asked uh, maybe to show another video on how to do that. So I am going to actually walk you through the new process for installing a Hyperland on Void. So let's go ahead and go over to my second workspace here. Um, I have the Hyperland wiki up right now. Um, and if you scroll down to the installation tab and down here and you click on Void, you can see it says it's not available from the Void Linux official repositories. This is true. Uh, they're claiming it's because the Void developers are salty and dislike the main developer. I don't know if that's the case, so please don't ask me. Um, I try not to follow the uh, drama. Um, I just prefer to use the tools. Um, I stopped caring about drama when I left high school. So. Um, we're just going to focus on the fact that there is a new way to install Void Linux, um, and that is by actually installing a repository or actually connecting a repository, syncing a repository to your system. So then you can install it just like installing anything else on Void using the xbps-install command. So it's pretty simple. Um, they have links here to the third-party repository, which is this right up here, the McReynolds um, Hyperland Void repository, which is the one in my original video. But that covers this portion down here, which is manually building. Now we have the ability to sync a repo. He's created a repo for this. We can sync that repo to our system and actually install things just like we would if we were using any other XBPS, uh, installing any other uh, standard XBPS package. So... Um, it shows you right here, you can basically uh, run this command, uh, create this file, it's the etc xbpsd hyperland voidconf you create that file and then add this line to it. So if you go to McReynolds readme here, it shows you, you can do this in one command by running this. Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead and launch a scratch pad here. We're going to zoom in a little bit and we are going to paste that in. Now, that is a little messy, so let's actually close that. Let's go back to Workspace ONE and launch an actual terminal and zoom in a little bit, and then let's paste that. So what we have now is we have a command that is echo repository equals https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash mcrenal slash hyperland void slash repository dash x86 underscore 64 dash glibc. If you're using Musil or something else, you're going to change that. You're going to update this here. Uh, it's going to get piped into T or into sudo T and then into XT, etc xbpsd hyperland void.conf. So I'm not going to run this command because I have already done it. So we are going to clear that and go ahead and clear the screen. And we are going to cd to etc xbps.d and hit enter. And you can see right here, I've got hyperlandvoid.conf. So if we cat hyperlandvoid.conf, you can see I have that repository equals a https colon slash slash raw github user content.com macrenal hyperland yada yada yada. So I have the list to that repository right here in my void hyperland.conf. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to do sudo xbps dash install dash s and hit enter enter your super secret password and hit enter. That is gonna sync that repository so you can actually just install away from that just like you would. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Now let's do a sudo, hyperlink, sudo xbps dash query. And we're gonna give it the dash capital RS flag and we're going to say hyper and hit enter. Once we do that, it's going to take a second, and you can see right here, we can install HyperPicker, HyperCursor, HyperGraphics, HyperIdle, HyperLand, HyperLand Debel, HyperLand Protocols, HyperLand QT Support, HyperLand QUtils, QT Utils, HyperLang, HyperLock, HyperPaper, HyperPolkit Agent, HyperSunset, HyperSystem System Info, HyperUtils, HyperWayland Scanner, and XDG Desktop Portal HyperLand. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to install HyperLand and XDG Desktop Portal Hyperland. Now that's gonna pull in a few other things out of here, but not everything. You can just go ahead and install what these are what you want. But for the, um, for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna do the main. So we're gonna run the sudo xbps dash install dash s. Oh, we don't need the sync we just did. Uh, we'll say Hyperland, and then we will say XDG Desktop Portal Hyperland. So we're going to install Hyperland and XDG port, desktop portal Hyperland. We're going to hit enter. 
It's going to take a second and you can see here, it's going to install hyper utils, aquamarine, hyperlang, hypercursor, hypergraphics, hyperland, and XDG desktop portal hyperland. Do you want to continue? Yes. So we go ahead and hit enter. It go ahead. It goes ahead and installs those just like normal. Let's clear the screen. One way we can check here is we can uh, CD into slash user slash share slash Wayland dash sessions and hit enter. And look at that. We have hyperland desktop. So let's go ahead and cat hyperland desktop and you can see it's our desktop entries for hyperland it's a intelligent dynamic tiling wayland compositor it's going to execute the hyperland command it's going to it's an application type and it is the desktop name is hyperland and the keywords are tiling wayland compositor so we have our desktop file we have hyperland installed we have hyperland um, xdg desktop portal hyperland installed all, depend, all the dependencies we need. Now, once we've done that, there are a few things you need to make sure you do. If we scroll down here to where it says running, you can see in order to run Hyperland, you will need to install some additional packages which will depend on your setup. A session and seat manager, i.e. seat D, and graphics drivers. So if we click on graphics drivers, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna to need to install the drivers you uh, that are needed for your system. AMD, Intel, Nvidia, whatever you got, you're gonna to need to take that and, uh, and get that stuff installed. Now, um, you may want to know that uh, right here, if you use an NVIDIA GPU, refer to the Hyperlin Wiki because I don't use an NVIDIA GPU. I can't do anything with that, so I can't walk you through any of that, but the Hyperlin Wiki explains it pretty well. Um, keep in mind, Hyperlin does not officially support NVIDIA, but it does work with it. So next thing you're going to need to do is you may have to add the user to the seat d group so if you're not part of the seat d group the underscore seat d group what you're going to need to do is let's go back over here let's clear the screen let's just cd home again clear the screen just because i like to be in my home d home directory uh so let's go ahead and run the command we need to do so i'm going to start out by saying groups jake and that's going to say which groups i'm in so i'm in all of these groups and right here you can see i'm in the underscore seat d group if you do not see this you're going to go ahead and run this command sudo user mod dash a g and then underscore seat d and then your user now you can run this just like this or you can put your username here instead of user uh, whatever you want to do but you're going to run that command and that will add you to the seat d group so once you've done that everything should be up and going and for the purposes of this video that is it i am going to actually log out of my system because i don't have a capture card i can't I'm not running dual systems here. I can't I can't keep you guys online while I log out and log back into Hyperland. Um, I'm not fancy like that. So I'm going to actually log out. Uh, so we're going to end this section of the video. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log back in. And when I log back in, you will see that we have Hyperland all set up. Now, um, when I say all set up, I mean we're going to be able to boot into it. I am not going over any customization in this video. There's a few little tweaks I'm going to have to do to actually get OBS to launch and stuff. But I'm not... Um, setting anything up it's just how i'm launching it so uh, you may have to do a little research once you get in there to how to set a few things up if you have questions by all means feel free to email me uh, leave a comment in the video whatever but this will just show you that we've got hyperland installed you can log into it you can get going and you can start building your config so i am going to actually end this video uh, or end this section of the video i'm going to log out and log back in and when i do i will be in hyperland so Fingers crossed this works and I will see you on the other side. A few moments later. All right, and here we go. You can see we have Hyperland up and going. Um, I did have to do a few things um, to get my OBS working and stuff like that. Um, and I did install Waybar on here just to see if I had an icon uh, or a sys tray involved right off the bat, but I don't. Um, anyway, that's literally all I did is I installed um, the repository in my XBPS dot d directory and then we sync that repository into our system and we can install anything we want to uh, just like we were installing from one of the other repositories um, so he made it nice and easy mcreynold did a great job doing this making it nice and easy for people who really wanted to get into this um, and i gotta say i know i made comments that i don't have it on my system and i won't put it back on my system but <laughs> you know just like anything else with anything shiny and new uh i started playing around a little bit here because it did take me a few minutes to get i had to install a couple other things to get obs up and going um and set some variables and do a few things to get obs to launch and all that but uh 
Uh, so yeah, it is installed, and now that I'm playing around with it, I might uh, goof around with it a little bit more just to see what's going on. Heck, maybe we'll do a configuration video here in the future. But um, as of right now, uh, this is a successful install of Hyperland on Void Linux using the McReynolds uh, repository, and uh, it works flawlessly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this helps you guys out, um, and you guys can get Hyperland up and going on yours. Because again, I got nothing against it personally. I got nothing against the the project and any of the people in it. I don't know any of the people in it, so um, it's not like I have anything bad to say anything about them. I do hear stuff fighting back and forth. I try to stay clear of that and stay out of that. Uh, it's not my not my thing. It's not my reason for, for being here. Uh, I just want to use the tools and the systems and... Uh, leave the rest of it uh, to the people that want to deal with that. So um, I got nothing to say on either side of that. So please don't ask me about how I feel about any of that stuff. But as far as the project goes, it's a really cool project. Um, maybe I'll keep it on here long enough just to see if I can determine whether or not there is leakage and stuff like that in the system. And um, if any of these negatives that uh, people are talking about hyperland, there's all kinds of positives out there. So I'm not going to sit here and sing its praises like everybody else does. I mean, and I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm just saying um, everybody seems to love hyperland. It's it's out there. It's everywhere. It's any any forum you go to that has anything to do with your system, you're going to see stuff about Hyperland on it. So there's plenty of stuff out there, plenty of positives out there, but there are those negatives out there that uh, maybe I'll just check into for myself and see if I can actually see if they're true or not. So... Uh, that being said, that's kind of it for today's video. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, and if you have any questions about what I did to get OBS up and going and stuff like that, because um, it's not they're not permanent fixes. I just ran some some commands in the terminal uh, launched up with certain settings um, and certain variables and uh, environment variable set and everything. Uh, so I haven't actually permanently set everything up to do this. Um, I just had to run through and do a few things to uh, actually get up and going. But if you have any questions about that stuff in the future, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down there. Email me. Uh, all my contact stuff is going to be on the in the description of the video. Uh, you guys should all know that. So that is that for this video. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. You know, stay safe and God bless.